Shabbat Shalom. Thank you all for joining us today. Those of you that are watching from all over the world, I would like to welcome you to our tour service here at the Olive Tree Messianic Fellowship. I would like to encourage you, maybe you're watching this on your big screen Roku. Uh, we have a Roku channel. Uh, you can also get the YouTube on Roku as well. I don't know if you know that or not, but YouTube is available on your Roku uh, device. Just in case something happens and you're not getting us over on our Roku channel. Uh, you can also go to olivetreemessianic.org. You see it there on the screen beside of me. olivetreemessianic.org, uh, Facebook. Uh, also, I, I encourage you to go to Facebook if you have a Facebook account. You don't necessarily have to watch it right now on Facebook, but I encourage you to go there at some point in time to share the message. Facebook is the largest platform, and if you go there and you share it, you're just helping to spread the gospel. Amen. That's what we're all about, is preaching the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is the gospel message. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and pass things on down to Chris. Chris is going to lead us in our tour service today, and you will see me come back a little bit later for the message. Uh, follow along in your siddur, as uh, Stephen's going to be leading us in that as well. So, Chris. Good morning again. Uh, for those of you that have just tuned in, I want to kind of catch you up because we're entering into our, our Torah services and it's important for us all to be on the same page together. Uh, we had a, a time of prayer a few moments ago before a time of worship and in that time we were reminded that it is about having faith and it is about trusting in God and we just sang a song about standing in Christ alone. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to open up our Torah time with the Matavu as we normally do. But I just want to remind you, so when you say these words, they'll have impact for you. Because part of the beginning says, I will enter your house in awe, I will bow towards your holy sanctuary. And that's what we're doing right now with the Torah service. We're entering the house of the Lord. And we are bowing in awe of His sanctuary. Because His sanctuary is the place that He created as a sanctuary, a place of refuge, a place that He invites us to come into so that we can have security, we can have protection, and we can know His comfort. We're entering into that with this time of Torah service. So I'm going to ask you to join us. And as you pray this, that you wouldn't just be praying those words, but that you would be entering in in awe as He leads us and as we stand in Him right now, no longer in this world, be transported into His holy sanctuary, into His presence, and let us continue to worship Him. If you will, let's begin with the Mato Vu. Matavu Halecha Yaakov, Mishkino Teka Israel, Vani Barov Kastecha, Avovetecha, Etaka Veil Hakol El Hakal Kacheka, Bayir Teka. Adonai ahavti meyom beteka umakom meshkan kevodecha vani ishtaka ve vekra evrecha evrecha lifne Adonai osi vani tefalati lecha Adonai Eight rats on Elohim Baruch Hastecha, an any behemed yeshecha. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. O oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord my Maker. 
As for me, may my prayers to you, O Lord, be at the right time. O God, in your abundant righteousness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Amen. And if we're going to enter into his sanctuary, then we have to recognize that he is the one and only. So as you pray this prayer, if there's anything, anything, distraction, thanksgiving, things of this world that is taking your focus even minutely away from the Almighty, this prayer is the time to let all of that go and recognize that He is the only one we are here to focus on. Won't you join me as we face towards the east in honor of our King who will come in all His glory when the eastern sky breaks forth. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam va'ed. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom for all eternity. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. B'kol lavavka uv'kol nafshecha uv'kol me'odeka. Vahayu haravarim ha'ele asher anoki matsavka hayom al lavavecha. Vishinan tam levanecha. Vidibar tabam vashivtaka bavetecha. Uv lektaka vaderek. Uv shakbaka uv kumecha. Uk shartam layot al yadeka. Yahu latotafot bain eneka. Uk taftam al mazuzot beteka uvish areka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you retire and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. As we say, the Amidah, the, the Father's. Let us join in in honoring our Heavenly Father. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Velohe Yaakov Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora El Elyon Go mel chasadim tovim, vechone ha kol, vizoche chaste avot, ume vi guel if nevenehem, la man shemo beahava. Melek ozer umashia umagain, barukata adonai, magain, Avraham. Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the righteousness of the fathers, and brings a Redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Amen. This time we're going to enter into the Torah service where we're going to bring forth our scroll. David, as our Torah attendant, would you please come forward at this time?
Let us say the Ankamoka together. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, and there is nothing like your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion is throughout all generations. Amen. The Lord reigns. The Lord has reigned. The Lord will reign forever and ever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Enka moka va Elohim Adonai va enka masecha malchutcha malchut kol olamim umel shaltcha bechol dor va dor Adonai mehelech Adonai mahalach Adonai imloch. Leolam vahed Adonai os leamo yitain Adonai vaharech et amo vashalom Parachamim Heti vavirzon kahet zion Evne homod Yerushalayim. Evne homod Yerushalayim. Ki vachalavad bat haknu melek el rambanisa. Adon Olamim. Father of mercies, do good in thy will to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. For in you alone do we trust, O King, God, exalted and lifted up, Master of the universe. Amen. Let us bring out the Torah scrolls. We're going to be on page 64, the bottom. If you want to follow along as you also follow the scroll as a way of indicating to the Lord that it is your desire to follow Him and Him alone. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. And let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Kumadonai via futsu oivecha via nusu misaneka mi paneka ki mitzion te tse torah ki mitzion te tse torah udavar adonai Mi Yerushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah, Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah, Torah Le'amo Yisrael B'Kadushato
Let us say the blessing over the reading of the word of the Lord. Baruch et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Asher B'Karbanu Mikol Ha'amim. V'Natan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. This week, we are in Maquettes at the end. Now, this is an um, interesting, of course, all of our Torah portions are interesting. But this is an interesting one for the time and the season that I think we're in. The readings come from Genesis chapter 41 through chapter 44, verse 17. Now, the Haftorah reading will come from 1 Kings 3, verse 15, through the very first verse of chapter 4. We also have some readings from the latter scriptures and the Brick Hadashah from Matthew 27, verse 15, through the end of the chapter 46, and Romans 10, verses 1 through 13. So as we... Read, which I hope and I pray every one of you have read throughout the week and that you've already looked at these passages. But as we read a portion of them this morning, may we let the Spirit of the Lord unite us in understanding of the word that he has for us this day. I'd ask if uh, Marion would make Aliyah as our reader today. Grab the mic, please. Thank you. And we're going to begin with Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 through 4, first in the Hebrew. Ve'yehi miketz shanateim yamim ofaro hodem vahini omed aleheor. Vahini men min heor ulat shave porot yafot bara overreot parsa basar batir ina baako. Vahine shave parot acherot ulat acha rehen min heor reot mara vedakot basar vata ama modna etzel. Haparot el esfat haor. Yes, please. Vatu halana haparot raot hamarae. Vadakot habarsa et sheva haparot yefot hamara. Ve habariot ve kats paro. And now in the English from the Tree of Life. Now at the end of two whole years, Pharaoh was dreaming. Behold, there he was standing by the Nile. Then behold, there were seven cows, good-looking and beefy, and they grazed in the reeds. Then behold, there were seven other cows coming up after them from the Nile, ugly and emaciated, and they stood beside the cows at the edge of the Nile. The ugly emaciated cows ate the seven good-looking beefy cows, and Pharaoh woke up. So we began our reading. Um, if you remember, last week we ended off with Joseph being in prison. And he had had two of Pharaoh's attendants come to him with their dreams. He told them what they meant. And he only asked that they remember him, especially uh, the one that was going to find pleasure in Pharaoh. And here it is two years later. 
So we've had a lapse of two years since last week's reading. Now, how many of you have ever been in situations where you know you were doing what you, you knew God had told you to do? See, Joseph knew he was supposed to be faithful with the flocks of his father. He knew he was supposed to honor his father. He knew he was supposed to respect his father, and he took back a bad report. Because all of his brothers were saying, Oh yeah, Dad, everything's okay. And Joseph's the one that sent back the bad report. And of course, there was backlash from it. Then God gave him the vision that he was going to be taking care of his family. And as a young boy, he was excited about that. And he shared it with his brothers and it only caused more hardship to the point that they sold him into slavery. Things started finally going good for him. And then he got accused of something falsely. And instead of being trusted, even though that he had proved himself to be a man of integrity who could rightly handle things and could be trusted, they chose not to trust him and threw him in prison. And even though he was in prison, even the guards trusted him. But this isn't at all what God had told him, was it? Have you ever been in that position? When I hear we start off with Pharaoh. And what is Pharaoh doing? He has a dream. Pharaoh, the leader of the world at that point. The superpower of nations. You know, the one that should be wisest and know most of all. But yet he trusted in the wisdom of this world. And he was confused and he didn't have a clue what was going on. But he knew it was important. But he still couldn't figure it out. Because of his distress, the servant comes back to him and says, I've sinned. Because two years ago, remember? Whenever you had thrown me in prison and then you brought me back into your good graces... Well, there was this Hebrew, and he told me a dream I had. If anyone can interpret it, he can. See, here was a man of the world that didn't really know the wisdom of God, but he had seen the effects of the wisdom of God. And he knew enough to tell the leader of the world, hey, there's a wisdom that's not of this world, and we need to consult that wisdom. Hmm. That's a good word for today, isn't it? That's a good reminder for this day and age we're in, isn't it? And not only that, but here Joseph goes even further because we have a famine that comes. And the famine comes, and during that famine, Joseph is given charge of the country to lay aside food for those poor times. And sure enough, they had been laid aside. He had the wisdom from God. But in that, there comes a famine around the world and everybody begins to come to Egypt because they had heard that Egypt was prepared. Nobody else was. Isn't that the wisdom of the world? The wisdom of the world never has us prepared when we need to be prepared. But the wisdom of God will. But in that, his brothers come. And in Joseph's wisdom, he gets them talking about their family. Because he knows that there's another brother that's missing. His own brother, Benjamin. And he tells them that if they come back and they don't bring the other brother, they're not going to get any more. And very reluctantly, when Israel sends his sons back, they say, we can't go back unless we take Benjamin. And they take Benjamin with him. And the end of our reading, we have Benjamin detained. Now we've already seen Joseph's a man of wisdom. Is he taking vengeance now? That's not been his M.O., has it? No, his wisdom is because God's wanting to do something for the greater good of mankind. 
He's wanting to take advantage of it, but he knows he can't. But he knows that God's doing something for the betterment of mankind. Because remember, the 12 tribes are the ones that are to bless all nations. That all nations may know God. Hmm. Before we go into our Hof Torah reading, and we look at a little bit more wisdom, let us give thanks to the Lord that He has given us His Word. And He's given us wisdom through His Word, not through our understanding. Zot HaTorah, Asher Sam Moshe, Lifne Bene Yisrael, Api Adonai, Biad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. Amen. Glad in God's wisdom, he doesn't trust one of us to do everything. <laughs> that we are here to help each other out. <laughs> Let us uh, continue looking into God's word with the Haftor reading. As we go to 1 Kings. And in 1 Kings, we're going to be in the third chapter. and We're going to do verses 15, 16, and 17. Then Solomon woke and took note of the dream. So he went to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he made a feast for all his courtiers. Later, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, My Lord, please, this woman and I live in the same house, and I delivered a child while she was in the house. Now the that Solomon woke up from was a dream where he was reminded about asking for wisdom. Now, that's important because, see, God always gives us an opportunity to realize he's there before the challenge comes. Because this is a very big challenge that's been put before Solomon. See, here's these two prostitutes. That gives us indication two people of the world trusting in the wisdom of the world now what Solomon does seems so brutal and so cruel because they're fussing over a living child because both of them had children nobody else saw the children but the two of them and one of them accidentally smothered her child in her sleep so she stole the other woman's child and took it as her own. There was nobody to witness which child went with which woman. Nobody else knew but those two women. So they come to the king to decide for them whose child this is. Who's the rightful mother of this child? So this is the story where Solomon says, Okay, bring me a sword. Cut the child in half and give half to each child, uh, uh, each woman. Then each will equally have the same. That doesn't sound like any godly wisdom, does it? But what happens? Mothers, do you want half of a dead child or do you want your child to live even if they can't live with you? 
A mother's heart says, let my child live. Let my child live. And one woman says, no, let her have the child. And the other woman says, hey, if, if I can't have them, then neither one of us is going to have them. Split them up. And Solomon knew at that moment, this is the rightful mother. Give the child to her. Sounded like non-wisdom to begin with, didn't it? Sounded like brutality. But yet it was godly wisdom. Because, see, God knows what he puts into the heart of men. God knows how he creates us. And he knows how we're going to respond. See, the wisdom of this world would have said, well, let's put up a court. Let's call witnesses. Let's take testimony. Let's have a DNA. None of that was needed, was it? Because God knows us. And His wisdom is based off of who we really are. Not what the world says, and not what we think we are, but who we are created to be. See, that's true wisdom. And true wisdom is what we are to follow. But true wisdom can only come from God, and it begins with the fear of the Lord. See, Solomon didn't care what everybody thought about him when he ordered the sword to be brought and when he made that proclamation because he was trusting in the Lord. He was trusting in the Lord to lead him to the right solution. And just like a few weeks ago with Abram, he knew at the moment a ram would be found in the thicket. See, we don't give up. And even whenever it doesn't seem to make sense, the wisdom of God still prevails. If you don't believe me, let's go to the Brit Hadashah. And let's read out of the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter, verses 38 through 40. Then two outlaws were executed with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those passing by were jeering at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are Ben Elohim, come down from the stake. See, the wisdom of the world was saying at that moment, Ah, prove yourself. If you say you're God Almighty, then you can come down. But the wisdom of God says, no, there's something greater for mankind. See, we've gone back to Joseph now, haven't we? God's wisdom is always about the greater mankind. See, God knows what He's doing. And though it might hurt us, and though it might confuse us for the moment... If we trust in Him, we have faith in Him, and we follow Him, one day all things will come to the light. He was between two thieves. And by the wisdom of God, right after this, one thief follows the wisdom of the world. The other thief follows the wisdom of God. And says, I'm getting what I deserve. I deserve this because I did my crime. This man did no crime. You are such a better person than I. Remember me in your glory. One follows the wisdom of this world. We are those criminals. Are you going to follow the wisdom of the world? Or are you going to follow the wisdom of God? Because even though we're sinners and we're the criminals of this world, we still can choose which wisdom we want to follow. Which wisdom are you going to follow? Let us say the blessing after reading of God's Word. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu torah temet 
Vachaye olam nata bitu kenu, Baruka ta hado nai no tain hato ra. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And let us rise up, for the word of God goes forth in our midst, and the word of God is the wisdom of God. Et kaim hi la makazikim ba veto makeha meu shar derakeha darke no am ve kol nativoteha shalom Ashivenu Adonai Elecha venashuva Kadesh, Kadesh yameinu Kadesh yameinu it is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. You may be seated. 